Hello audience. Today we will discuss about the radiated emission test as per military standards. These tests quantify undesired signals being radiated into the air from a device and the associated cables. If unchecked, these signals couple onto other equipment cables or may enter into the other equipment chassis and onto internal conductors. The received field has the potential to induce current in other equipment conductors and may cause harmful interference from either field. Now we discussed about the radiated emission test performed under the MIL 461 standard. First, RE 101, radiated emission, magnetic field. Then, RE 102, radiated emission, electric field. Last, RE 103, radiated emission, antennas purius, and harmonic outputs. RE 101 radiated emissions, magnetic field, 30 Hz to 100 kHz. This requirement is applicable from 30 Hz to 100 kHz for radiated emissions from equipment and subsystem enclosures, including electrical cable interfaces with the magnetic loop antenna located 1 meter from the equipment under test, EUT. The requirement does not apply to radiation from antennas. This test procedure is used to verify that the magnetic field emissions from the EUT and its associated electrical interfaces do not exceed specified requirements. The limit was in decibel PT, decibel reference to 1 pgutzla, terms indicating a flux density measurement. MIL 461 E removed the 50 cm testing distance calling for compliance at the 7 cm test distance. MIL 461F added a distance measurement to the RE-101 test method. If the device was non-compliant at the 7 cm distance, the procedure calls for increasing the distance to meet the limit and provide that distance information in the test report for assessment by the procuring agency. RE-101 first with the signal integrity verification where we check the measurement system by creating a known signal frequency and amplitude. We then measure the signal to ensure we obtain the correct values using the measurement system we have selected for test. Adding to the check, the target amplitude should be 6 dB below the applicable limit to demonstrate measurement system sensitivity to detect emissions at that level. While observing the receiver display, move the loop antenna over the EUT face maintaining the 7 cm spacing. At the location where the worst case emissions were detected, orient the loop to perpendicular to the EUT and perpendicular to the ground plane to verify maximum emissions. The third orientation, perpendicular to the EUT and parallel to the ground plane will be used to complete that segment of the test. Repeat the testing for each frequency range segment and each phase of the EUT. The standard discusses measuring worst case emission and a number of frequency points, but this method described above captures all frequency points instead of a select few. RE-102, Radiated Emissions, Electric Field, 10 kHz to 18 GHz. The RE-102 applicability and limits as found in MIL 461F. The requirements are applicable to electric field emissions from the EUT, equipment under test, and associated cables. The basic intent of the requirements is to protect sensitive receivers from interference coupled through the antennas associated with the receiver. Many tuned receivers have sensitivities on the order of 1 microvolt and are connected to intentional apertures, the antenna, that are constructed for efficient reception of energy in the operating range of the receiver. The potential for degradation requires relatively stringent requirements to prevent platform problems. The antenna is positioned 1 meter from the test boundary. The test boundary is the area that encompasses the EUT cables, and LISN, not the ground plane. If the cables are 10 cm from the ground plane front edge, then the antenna is 0.9 m from the ground plane. The rod and biconical antennae are normally located near the center of the test boundary. 
the double dredge horn antenna is positioned so that the EUT plus 35 centimeters of cable is within the antenna beam width for the 200 megahertz to 1 gigahertz range. The double ridge horn for the 1 GHz to 18 GHz antenna is positioned to place the EUT plus 7 cm of cable in the antenna beam width. For large test articles, multiple antenna positions may be necessary to examine the EUT. Horizontal and vertical antenna polarizations present different beam widths so one polarization may require more positions than the other polarization. The standard indicates that testing should be accomplished on the EUT face with maximum emissions. Prior to test, a probing process may be used to look at all phases to determine worst case orientations. Frequently, the cable interface side is worst at lower frequencies and an operator display face or open panels are worse at higher frequencies. Testing of more than one face may be necessary. RE 103, antennas Purious and Harmonic Outputs, 10 kHz to 40 GHz. Normally, a spurious emission appears outside of the necessary band width of the intention transmission. Harmonic, parasitic, intermodulation products and frequency conversion products typically fall under the umbrella of spurious emissions or unwanted emissions associated with a device that normally creates other frequencies. RE-103 does not establish requirements for receivers or transmitters in standby mode. Devices with a designed in or permanently mounted antenna do not have requirements for antenna port emissions since C-106 is not applicable to this type of device. Therefore, we default to RE-102 for emission requirements associated with receive and standby modes of operation. Depending on the device, RE-103 testing can be rather simple or extremely complex. Planning is critical and in some cases, the need for specialized equipment may present a long lead time to prepare for testing. Many details are involved, and in many cases, it is easy to induce minor factors affecting the results. Previously, CEO6 provided the conducted testing alternative with RE03 being applicable if the average power exceeded 5 kW, the antenna was permanently mounted or if the operating frequency exceeded 1.24 GHz. In the early days, Testing of tunable devices called for testing with the device tuned to three frequencies per octave within each tuning band including within 5% from each end of the tuning band. The test frequency range provided for testing to 40 GHz instead of the previous version supporting the 20 GHz to 40 GHz as optional. The actual test frequency range is based on the operating frequency of the equipment under test, EUT. Maximum test frequency became 20 times the highest operating frequency up to 40 GHz. Thanking you.